A few months back, I reviewed the original release of Luminar 4 when I compared it up against Lightroom. And overall, I felt Luminar did a pretty good job in that it is kind of like a Lightroom and Photoshop all in one, and it doesn't have the Adobe subscription costs. But there were some kind of issues with it that I felt. There were some user interface problems, and the biggest issue for me was the optimization, or rather the lack of optimization. The program was pretty sluggish. Anytime you'd adjust the slider, there would be a noticeable delay between you making the adjustment and the adjustment actually appearing on the image, which obviously slows down your whole workflow. That and the export times were pretty long as well. Now, since that review, there have been some new updates to Luminar 4, the most recent of which has just been launched version 4.3. Now, Skyland were very kind and gave me a pre-release copy of 4.3 to try out. So in this video, we're going to essentially update the old review and look at how Luminar 4 performs now, what new features have been added, what improvements have been made, and also look at some areas where I feel that Luminar is still letting itself down. So in terms of the changes that have been made, the first that they talk about on their press release is the photo search tool. So this is a new little uh, box at the top of the screen where you can literally search for uh, files by extension, by file name, or by the folder that they are in. Now, when I first saw this, I thought it was going to solve a problem that I'd raised with Luminar 4 to begin with which is that the library isn't particularly the most user-friendly to try and find your images. So similar to Lightroom, when you import images, it goes into your library and you can see all of the, the folders down the side where all of the different imported images are being stored. With Lightroom, you can not only see the folder name where the file is being stored, but you can see the, the root of folders above it, so you know which subfolders you are looking at. With Luminar, you don't get that function. You only get to see the name of the folder where the images are stored, not which folders that might be a subfolder of. Now, that causes particular problems for me because the way that my particular workflow is, whenever I have a project or a shoot, I will name the main folder as that main shoot, but then the subfolders within it are kind of generic. It's things like RAW or JPEG or thumbnails, etc. Which is fine from an explorer point of view because you just find the main folder that you're looking for, you know, project, whatever, and then you, you know that all of the subsequent subfolders, you know what images are in there. But then in Luminar, my library is now just filled with a list of all folders that are all named RAWs or JPEGs or thumbnails, etc. So it makes it very difficult for me to then find a particular image that I'm looking for. Now, I was hoping that the search tool would fix that by allowing me to search for a particular folder name, which you can search for folders, but you can only search for the folders that are essentially in your list already. Now, it's fine if you don't store your images in subfolders or the folder that the images are stored in is labeled up as the project you want. You can search dead easy. Or if you've renamed all of your images to you know that particular project, it works fine. But if you leave everything as generic, the search tool essentially, for me, does absolutely nothing. Which is a shame. I am really hoping that at some point Skyland will get around to changing that interface so that you can find... Uh, you know, your, your root folders a whole lot easier. The next thing they point out is that they've added 500 pixels integration, which is that Luminar is now essentially linked with the 500 pixels platform, which is going to make it easier for you to share your images from Luminar once you've edited them straight to the 500 pixels platform. Although I'll be honest, I don't use the 500 pixels platform anymore, haven't done for years. Although the last time I did use it, I never had Luminar, and I never had a problem with it. So maybe it has streamed it a little bit, but I can't imagine that it's made that much of a drastic change. 
Anyway, getting on to the better stuff now. Stability and performance improvements. This was a big, big factor for me. The original Luminar that I reviewed, as I said before, was very sluggish. It was also kind of buggy. It was prone to crashes occasionally. 4.3 does seem to have fixed most of those problems. To be fair, the crashes have been pretty much fixed since a few updates ago. But 4.3 has taken it a step further in terms of optimizing how much memory the program is using, how fast and smooth the program goes, and it has taken a good step forward now. So now when you're adjusting sliders, when you're making alterations to settings, they are processed a lot faster. They, they render the previews a whole lot quicker than they did originally. I would say it's almost as smooth as Lightroom now in terms of the editing workflow. In the export times, things have improved, but we've not reached Adobe levels just yet. Now, unfortunately, I obviously don't have the original version of Luminar anymore to do a direct test as to how much change has been made since the original version, now to 4.3. And there have been updates in between these releases that have kind of improved the export times as well. But I can tell you that comparing up 4.2 to 4.3, there has been a good step forward. So I tested it by exporting three uncompressed RAW files edited in version 4.2, and it took around 48 seconds for Luminar to export all three of those RAW files. I then updated to 4.3 and reran the same test, and the export time dropped to about 40 and a half seconds. Now, admittedly, Lightroom would probably take about 15 seconds to do those exports. So, like I said, we're not into the realms of Lightroom territory yet, but we are at least moving in the right direction, which is good to see. Another speed up that they've made is now to do with the looks. Now, looks in Luminar is essentially like the presets in Lightroom, where you can hover over the preset and it will, you know, make uh, predetermined alterations to the image. And again, with the original version of Luminar, these were very, very sluggish. There was a, a very big delay with from you hovering over a particular look to that look then appearing. And I, I never used the looks. I mean, to be honest, I never used presets full stop. But if I was, I would have hated using the looks in the original version of Luminar. So with 4.3, they have streamlined that now where it is a lot quicker between you hovering over a look and that look then appearing on the screen. Which, again... It doesn't affect me because I don't use the looks, but if you are someone who does use presets, this has been a good step forward. They've also changed the cropping tab, that again, it's been optimized, so it runs a whole lot smoother. Basically, the whole workflow of editing in 4.3 is substantially faster now. The next thing they've changed is the they have improved the AI Augmented Sky tool. Now, this wasn't actually... Uh, something that was in the original Luminar 4 that I reviewed. The only AI sky tool then was the sky replacement tool, which is still in 4.3. That lets you literally replace the entire sky of your image with a completely different sky, either one of the preloaded ones within Luminar, or you can load your own custom file in. The AI augmented sky tool lets you add objects into your sky as well. Now this can be crazy things like planets and moons and uh, the Aurora Borealis or now a space shuttle taking off or lightning or fireworks or it can be something a little bit more mundane like a plane or some birds. Now obviously the really big crazy things like the moon and the planets are going to be when you're doing the really surreal extreme edits which I have played around with. But the, just adding the subtle things like a, a bird in the sky or a small plane in the distance just helps add a little bit more to an image, I think, without going too crazy. Now, obviously, you can do stuff like that in Photoshop as well. It's just with the, the Luminar way of doing it, it kind of works out all the masking and everything for you. So it just makes things that little bit quicker. So the augmented sky tool from a point of view of putting an object into your scene is a really good tool, in my opinion. The one aspect of it, however, that I don't like is the fact that you can only add one object at a time. So if you wanted to put multiple objects in, essentially you can't. 
because the augmented tool lets you pick one object, you can move it, you can resize it, you can mask it, etc. But then if you try and add a different object, all it does is replace the object that you've already put in. The only workaround, at least that I can find, as to how to add more than one augmented object into a scene is to put your first object in, then export the image, re-import it as a new image, and then add the next object. And then if you want to add multiple objects, each time you have to export and re-import. Absolute ball lake for two reasons. Firstly, it just adds so much more time because you have to export and re-import every single time. Secondly, if you then change your mind about something, say you've added an object in and then you export and you re-import and then you go to add your next object and you actually change your mind about the first object, it's baked into the file. You can't do anything about it. You have to go back to your original image and restart the whole process again. Absolute nightmare. And it's a shame because there is the facility within Luminar to add layers over your image. And the adjustment layers don't let you add augmented objects into it. They're only for localizing particular edits like contrast and color changes, etc. Now, talking of adjusting and masking, we come on to the final improvement of 4.3 and also the next big change that I would like to see Luminar make. So in terms of the update that they've made to the masking tool, which is a good improvement in my opinion, is that they've now made it that when you are masking, uh, when you're putting a, a mask in place, it shows you the area where the mask is sitting in bold red. Prior to this, you couldn't see where you'd masked or where you'd be masking. You had to, it literally showed you a live uh, change, if you like, a live update of where you've been masking. Now that's fine if you're making some really big drastic change, like for example, you've, you're have boosting the exposure of a particular part of the scene by a stop or two. As you start to mask that area out, you can see a clear difference between what's been masked and what hasn't. But if you're trying to make very subtle changes, like you just want to change the HSLs of a particular color channel slightly in one part of the scene, it can be quite difficult to, dis to determine which bits you've actually masked and which bits you've not. With the update now, as you mask out, it shows you in, in big bold red where you've actually painted on and where you've not. So you know if you've missed bits, you know if you've gone too far, you can correct everything off. The moment you, you confirm that that mask's been changed, the red disappears and you can see the final image, which is a great thing. However, my big problem now when it comes to localizing edits within a scene is the use of the adjustment layers that I mentioned a minute ago. So overall, the adjustment layers work in a very good way that you can essentially make adjustments to your base layer image. So I generally make global adjustments to the whole image, like I will adjust the highlights and the shadows and the contrast and the, the color temperatures of the whole picture. But then if I then want to localize edits, you add a new adjustment layer over your existing image. You make what alterations you want to it. So for example, if I wanted to tweak the color temperatures in one particular part of the frame, then I would make the color adjustments and then use a mask to just tell it I want it to be on that particular part of the scene. But then you can add multiple adjustment layers. So you know, you might want to uh, add a bit more saturation to one part of the scene. You might want to change the contrast to a different part of the scene. So you do it as two different adjustment layers. That all works fine. The problem I found arises when you then go back to make an adjustment to a previous layer, it disables all of the above adjustment layers. So I've had it sometimes where I've decided I want to make some changes and I click back onto my original image to make the changes and I'm then trying to imagine how is the finished thing gonna look once the layer masks go back in place, and then when they go back in place, I actually find I'm not quite happy with it, and you've gotta go back and change it again. The only workaround that I've come up with, and it's taken me a little bit of time to get used to, to be honest, is if I make global adjustments, and then add a load of adjustment layers, and then wanna make more global adjustments, rather than go back to the original image, I have to have a whole new, brand new layer mask over the top of it that it then adds global adjustments. So it just makes the whole workflow rather confusing. I think it would just be so much easier 
if when you click back through previous image layers, it doesn't disable the layers above it. That would be my take on it. But anyway, that pretty much sums up all the changes that Luminar have introduced now to 4.3 since the original review that I did. So as a whole, compared to the original version that I reviewed in the past, 4.3 Luminar 4 in general is now substantially improved. The whole workflow just runs so much smoother. Export times and everything are starting to come down. Like I said, we're not quite at Lightroom levels yet, but it, we've certainly taken a big step forward over what was originally available to us. Now, it hasn't really changed my overall basic conclusion of Luminar 4 in that if you're someone who is only after software for editing big batches of images and making small alterations to each one, like you're tweaking the color temperatures, the contrast, the highlights of the shadows, and that's about it, then honestly, you'll you'll find the workflow slower in Luminar 4 than you will in Lightroom. But if you're someone who is only working on occasional images, or the images that you're working on, you're making much more substantial alterations to them where you would usually require the use of both Lightroom and Photoshop, then your overall workflow is going to be really either no different or actually potentially faster using Luminar 4. So for some people, Lightroom will still be the better choice for their workflow, but the gap has now certainly decreased and hopefully we will continue to see these changes improved and then we come on to the biggest difference really between Lightroom and Luminar which is purchasing it. Lightroom is obviously you're on the Adobe subscription so you have to pay £10 a month to continually own and have the up-to-date version of Lightroom. Luminar by comparison is the more traditional method of you purchase Luminar 4 you get all of the updates of Luminar 4 until at some point in the future they'll bring out Luminar 5, but you won't be forced to buy Luminar 5, 4 will still work in whatever state it's currently in. And as an added bonus, if you are interested in purchasing Luminar 4, while the re uh, regular price is $80, there is actually an affiliate link down below where you can get it discounted at only $69. Now, obviously, if you've already bought Luminar 4, you don't have to pay anything extra to get 4.3. You just go and update it through the software. But if you are interested in purchasing Luminar 4 as a new user, do check out the affiliate link down below because it will not only help the channel, but you'll save yourself some money as well. But that's it for this video, guys. What do you make of the new Luminar update now? Are you interested in it or do you still prefer something else? Leave your thoughts and comments in the box down below. While you're down there, if you enjoyed this video or you found it helpful, please consider hitting the old like and subscribe buttons. Thank you so much for stopping by and hopefully I will see you in the next video.